So next and final speaker, Xiu Yu, and is going to speak about learning with biased complementary labels. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Xiu Yu. I'm from C uh, UB Tech Sydney AI Center, the University of Sydney. Today, I will introduce uh, how to learn with biased complementary labels. Uh, we all know deep supervised learning has achieved great success. Uh, for example, uh, in image net classification, deep neural network has achieved better performance than, than human being. But the success of the deep supervised learning is based on a very strong assumption. That is, all data are accurately and reliably labeled. But labeling a very large scale data set is always expensive and time consuming. Labeling millions of images may require tons of engineering uh, engineers for several months, it will cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. So in order to reduce the expensive labeling cost, several surrogates for the data with true labels are proposed. The first one is the positive and unlabeled data. We are given a small set of positive data and a large set of unlabeled data. The second one is semi-supervised data. We're given a few correct label data and a large set of unlabeled data. The third one is the data with noise labels. We're given a large amount of data with noise labels. A famous example is the web vision data set. Uh, the data are downloaded from the internet by searching with the keywords. Today, I will introduce a new surrogate for data with true labels. That is the complementary labels. In traditional supervised learning, the true label indicates a class that a feature belongs to. But in the learning with complementary labels, the complementary label specifies a class that a feature does not belong to. Uh, there are many advantages of complementary labels. The first one is labeling complementary label is label seven and probably does not require too much expert in knowledge. Here is an example. We can assign the complementary labels by the machine using techniques such as transfer learning. Give us large set of unlabeled data. We use a pre-trained model to predict the labels. After we have the predict labels, a simple judgment can be done to verify a label is true label or complementary label. For example, if a label is correct, it is the true label. If a label is incorrect, it's a complementary label. Today, we mainly focus on the complementary label. We can also uh, assign the complementary label by uh, using random strategies, give a nice set of unlabeled data, we can select a label from the label set using the rounding and the equal probability. After we give the predicted label, we, also, we can also uh, do a simple judgment to, to get the complementary labels. Um, there are also some other advantages of complementary label. For, for example, a learning with complementary labels share the same learning process with traditional supervised learning. It also enjoys not too much decrease of the performance. Uh, to begin with, uh, we need to introduce uh, how can we model the annotation of the complementary labels. We denote X as feature, Y as true label, Y bar as complementary label. Here is an example. 
For example, we give an image of a monkey, and we'll also provide a set of candidate complement variable. We use a probability to indicate each, how likely each candidate can be selected as a complement variable. The, the probability is the transaction probability. We also assume that given the true label, the complementary label and the feature are conditionally independent. According to the values of transaction probability, there are many different problem settings. The first setting is the uniform setting. In this setting, the transaction probability are equal. This setting can be occurred in the following example. We randomly assign the labels by uh, using the equal and the uh, equal probabilities. The generated complementary labels are uniform and the trans transaction probability are equal. In this setting, uh, uh, we can mod uh, modify the one with all loss or, and the pairwise comparison loss to deal with the uniform complementary label. For more information, uh, please refer to the NIPS paper. But in many cases, the transaction probability are likely to be different. For example, if you, we to assign the complementary label by using the pre-trained model, the pre-trained model are likely to give incorrect labels, that is, the complementary labels to classes with similar content. But the existing method are not designed to deal with the biased complementary label. That is, the, the transaction probability are different. This motivates our method to learn with biased complementary labels. Uh, the contribution of our, our method are, first, we provide a general method to modify traditional loss function and to extend to standard deep neural network classifiers to learn with best complementary labels. Second, we prove that the classifier learned from the biased complementary labels can be identical to that learned from the true labels. Third, we prove that the generalization error converges fast than, faster than many existing method in, the, in some wild conditions. We also can estimate the transaction probability with no bias. Today, we, I, in this talk, I mainly focus on the first contribution. For more details about the theoretical result, please refer to our ECCV paper. OK. Uh, uh, before introduce our main framework, we need to figure out an important relationship. That is, we, how we can recover the information of PY condition X from the PY back condition X. The PY condition X is the key to the, uh, get that classifier to determine the true labels. We can see the two conditional probability can be connected with the transaction probability we have the important relationship connected by the transaction matrix. Uh, if, the, if we can learn the conditional probability PY bar condition X, we, we can then get the probability PY condition X by inverting the transpose of the transaction matrix. Here comes our main framework. We simply add a transaction layer, the QT, after the so traditional uh, uh, deep neural network softmax function. And if we are given a sufficient large training examples, uh, the, the function QX will approach to PY bar condition X. According to the key uh, important relationship we described above, the function gx will approach to py condition x. In this way, we can get a, a classifier that can predict the true label for each instance. We 
can also jointly learn with true labels and complementary labels. We can add the traditional cross entropy loss with respect to the data with true labels before the transaction layer and after the softmax function. Then we can join learning with the true label and the complementary labels. The only problem remains is how to estimate the transaction probability. We introduce an ink set condition that we, we assume that, that we are given a small set of cleaning examples in each class, so that the tr conditional probability PY equal to uh, condition X is one and the other con probability is zero. Then according to the K, uh, important relationship uh, described above, we can see the transaction probability can be recovered from the conditional probability PY bar condition X. And uh, here are some e uh, experimental results. We first show the estimation of the transaction probability on different settings. The first setting is the transaction measures have some entries, uh, zero entries. And the second setting is uh, the, the transaction probability uh, are non-zeros in the transaction measures. We can see if we give a very small set of cleaning examples, for example, uh, 10 examples in each class, good results can achieve to estimate the transaction probability. We test our method on the uniform setting. Uh, the, we conduct the experiments on the USPS and the UCI data sets. In this setting, the transaction probability are equal and known. We can see both the pairwise comparison loss and all methods achieve good performance. We also conduct experiments on the bias setting uh, on the data set MLIST, CIFAR 10, CIFAR 100, and Tiny ImageNet. We can see that all methods can achieve better results on both the uniform and bias setting. It, uh, we can also see that the, the performance of learning with biased complementary labels are close to that of learning with true labels, especially in the with zero set setting, the last column. We also found an interesting phenomenon in our experiments. That is, even if we are given a non-invertible transaction matrix, in some cases, the good result can be achieved. This will be our future topic. Uh, that is, how to learn with the year-defined complementary labels. That's all, thank, thank you. Uh, if you have any questions, please come to my post section. Thank you. Are there any questions? Okay, I might have a question then. Um, so you said in order to make it use of these complementary labels, you need to have a set of uh, a, few, a small set of clean examples for which you actually do know the label. Yes. But is this really uh, true? Is that a necessary condition? Because if you get a million annotators labeling my data, and none of them ever tells me the correct label for something, but they sample uniformly all the other labels, I should be able to infer which are the correct labels for these data points, right? Without having a clean set, just by taking a complement of whatever the annotators told me. Uh, actually, in my previous slide, I have showed that if you use some strategy to assign, uh, for example, the pre-trained model to determine the uh, labels, you will get some clean label and also some complementary labels. If you get some true labels, you can estimate the tr transaction probability. 
and uh, we can join many with the uh, two labels and the complementary labels. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions? I guess not. So let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.